Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality and today I have something that I want to show you. I've been working on these for back to school. I was inspired by Paper Pippi. If you've never seen her over on Instagram, I'll put her link down below. She has awesome junk journaling journals and ephemera packs and things that she sells and makes. And she had made some vintage she had some vintage Crayola boxes that she made little mini journals on previously I believe either last year or years back I can't remember but I've seen them on Instagram as well as they pop up in my in my Etsy or my Pinterest feed every once in a while and they're just so cute I was not able to get my hands on vintage Crayola boxes but I did pick them up at Target and also I believe Myers, they have them on sale right now since back to school is coming up. So they're like 50 cents a box. So I picked up four of them. I am working on four of these little mini journals and I wanted to show you a couple that I've made here. And then I wanna show you how, how I went through making them. I have three almost complete, pretty much just have to stick all the ephemera on the inside. This one I just finished packing full super adorable I have two more that are like this that I haven't filled yet that I have to do that for but I wanted to show you one of these this one here and then I'll get into showing you how I made them so this one I actually did not stitch around this was the first one that I made and I made it a little bit differently and then when I went to the last three I wanted to add the stitching so that the last three that you'll see, um, actually the one I'll show you is will be the stitched version, but I think both of them look really cool like this. So, but I just thought that stitching added a little more texture to it, but I love them both ways anyway. So, um, but you could see this one and if you didn't have a sewing machine, you wouldn't have to make it with the stitching. So anyway, I love how this turned out. It's so chunky and just a super cute little size. It would be perfect for putting like wallet size photos if you have a child that's starting school, maybe in kindergarten or whatever year they're in. And you can just add pictures so you have that as a little memory or it would make a great teacher gift and you could put a gift card in there and then, then they could add whatever they wanted into it. So these will be in my Etsy shop. So I'll put the link for that down below. All right, I'll just go through how I made this or how I'll just go and show it to you first and then we'll, then I'll show you how I made this. So it is a crayon box, obviously. I found these little chalkboards at the Dollar Tree. They have, um, uh, a clip on the back and so I just used a heat gun and took the clip off the back because I didn't need it to clip obviously and then I wrote ABC with a paint marker and then I have an apple punch so I punched an apple out of some printed cardstock and this or scrapbook paper and then I found these cute little crayon buttons at Myers. Or no, they were at Hobby Lobby. So in the sewing section, there are buttons. And so, yeah, there's like a pack of, I think, 12. So I glued that on there. And then there's four little signatures. So cute. And then on the back, I had a paper pack that I picked up at Joann's. And I'll show you that here. It is a die cuts with a view pack called school time so that's what that is here it's really a really cool pack it has foil sheets but just all different kinds of double-sided papers that all go together so I use that on here and then I picked up this crayon ribbon at Hobby Lobby. So that is glued in for the ties. And then I also made this little charm 
with some letter beads from the Dollar Tree or they also sell them at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Joann's I'm sure so I made a little charm there open this up and try I'll do like a really quick flip through of this here's the little pocket this is a vintage playing card number six and then on this page I sewed some pom-pom trim this is a vintage book page a little girl at a school table and then I just made it into a pocket on the side and this was a cut apart and there's a vintage milk cap some rickrack on that page this was some stationery that I had in my stash so I just made this into a little tuck spot there or belly band and then this is some teacher border that has books on it and then these and this is like a nameplate or a label those were from Hobby Lobby in the teaching supply section I had a stamp that says first day of school so I stamped that and here's a pocket and I stamped a little backpack and a ruler on there on the tag here's another belly band I just put some extra school paper in there scrap of paper This is another pocket. I didn't have anything in there. And on the other side is another part of a book page. Oops. Here is a pocket at the top. And I had this cute vintage playing card that had this little boy fishing. I just wanted to include some vintage kids in here since it's for school. And then this is a vintage workbook page. I keep moving over, I apologize. <laughs> and then this is a vintage little girl in this cute little dress. I thought it was a perfect little school dress, but it is a flannel piece. I had found a flannel, like a flannel, the old flannel boards where they would use a flannel board and then pictures to tell a story for a lesson or whatever had that when I was a kid anyway. This was a little school dot schoolhouse die cut and that's a, like a little tuck there. This is another little side pocket. This was a piece from a certificate that I bought a little pack at the Dollar Tree so I just cut that apart. And then I stamped this school bus on the side there. I made two paper clips for each book, one with the crayon ribbon. So this is part, I cut down a big flash card, so that sticks in there. And then on this side is a piece from another book page. There is a little crayon die cut, that was something I found in my scrapbook stash and then I put a vintage ticket on that page this is some old embroidered ribbon that I was given thought that went perfectly with the theme and here's another vintage workbook page this is another piece of scrapbook paper I made a pocket at the top and then this was a little tag that I had in my scrapbook stash had a little scrapbook kit that was for back to school. Here's another piece of paper from that pad. And then here is another altered paper clip. And then I added this little piece of workbook page here. On the other side, I had these vintage puzzle it's like a 
they're like two pieces that go together a little um, teaching kind of like it's just like a teaching card and you had to you have to match up the different shapes with the puzzle pieces anyway this is two pieces of this is the border and then that was the nameplate and I believe this was from the Dollar Tree and that was the Hobby Lobby and then here's another vintage book page another one there I stamped a little pencil right there it's just some graph paper with rickrack here's another cute little playing card the little girl this was the side of the crayon box and I just used that to make a belly band so you can stick little things in there here is a vintage book page it was a dictionary page doily this is a flash card and then this was a glassine bag that I cut down and a little apple die cut in there this opens up and I used the top of the Crayola bag for a little pocket so I stuck some tickets in there there's the other flash card piece the doily on the other side of that dictionary page and then here is another pocket at the top and I had a library card so I trimmed it down to fit and I added some pencil trim that was from that gift certificate like the it was like an awesome great job certificate pack that I found at the Dollar Tree And then here's the last the back pocket there and I just made a pocket and then added this cut apart that was from the paper pad collection and the back so that is the super cute little Crayola mini journal those will be in my Etsy shop and now we'll go into how I made this journal I'm starting by taking apart my Crayola box. I just cut down one side there, opened it up and cut that apart. And then I'm going to use my paper trimmer and trim off the flaps. I am saving the little side piece there for a little belly band, so I was trimming that up. And then I'm also going to save the top of the that part there where it has the crayon colors so that is the part I'm going to use for my cover I'm just going to pull a piece of paper over and mark it where I need to trim it down I'm making it basically the size of the cover there and then trimming that I'm just going to mark where the folds need to be for the spine. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold it and use my scissors to just kind of make a nice crease on both sides. And then I'm pulling in some pieces here to make little pockets on the front and the back, so I trim that down. And I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and actually sew those on. This is a thin cut apart, so I'm going to add some scrapbook paper to make it a little bit thicker, and I'll sew those two pieces together as well. So showing there I'm going to sew those on 
and then this back piece I cut to fit the back and I went over and I did a zigzag stitch on all of that just kind of sewed it directly to the inside of that and the pockets and then I sewed the back and I'm going to glue that back piece on just with my tacky glue and now I'm just trimming the little edges because it wasn't perfectly it didn't line up perfectly when I sewed it on I'm cutting or punching out a couple of one inch circles and I'm going to add my ribbon ties and just gluing the ribbon onto the pages and then gluing that little circle on top of it just to finish it off and it holds it on a little bit better I, you can also glue it in between the paper and your cover before sewing it in but I just decided after I sewed it on that I wanted to add these pieces so that's what I'm doing here so I just punched the circle and then I cut a little bit off the side so it would line up with the side of the cover and I'm doing that on the other side as well my ribbon pieces are approximately one foot long and this ribbon I picked up at Hobby Lobby I believe the crayon ribbon Now I have all my papers that I wanted to use for my signatures. I cut them to be a little bit smaller than the size of the cover of the crayon box. So it's about two and three quarters wide by three and three quarters tall. And then I also have vintage book pages that I found that had school it was like a dictionary page and then I also had that Apple stationery. I have writing papers that I've collected. You can find some of these at the Dollar Tree. I also have grid paper. For the stationery, I'm folding them up and making pockets. And then I also have that book plate, like book border and nameplate borders that I believe were either from Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. So here I'm just folding these down making sure that they're the same the right width that I want and then I'm cutting this down to five and a half so that when I fold it it makes the two and three quarters and I'm just making sure that I have the right width there it is five and a half so I cut those both at five and a half and then I'm folding them in half and I will be sewing those together on my sewing machine and that will make a little page and then I'm cutting this awesome attendance certificate down this was from there was like a packet at the Dollar Tree so that will be sewn onto a piece of paper for one of the pages and then I also have this rainbow glassine bag that I believe these this was from the Dollar Tree as well so I'm folding that down to be the size of the page and I'm going to sew the pocket on that that will be sewn onto that paper so I went through now I'm just kind of going through making sure all of my papers are the right width and seeing if I need to sew any more these were a little bit wide and this one I folded wrong as well it wasn't the right width so I'm going through and refolding and cutting what I need here those I'm going to sew in the middle and the bottom to make two pockets so now I'm going to lay out all my scrapbook papers because those are going to be the covers of my signatures and I'll have four signatures on this and now I'm just going through and dividing out my papers make sure I have an even amount in each little signature I have a 
flashcard there that I folded in half. I also had a popcorn bag that I cut down to make the size. This one I found that I needed to sew, so I went ahead and sewed that. Now I'm going to layer them all into the individual signatures, kind of alternating styles, book pages, and lined paper and things. This one I noticed I didn't sew that, so I went ahead and did that. After I have them all layered up, I'll go ahead and add in my laces and trims along here and sew those. But I'm going to paper clip them all to where I want to sew them and then take everything over to the sewing machine. These are a variety of vintage and new I, things that I just had in my stash of trims and rickrack and things. And then I always go in after when I have the book put together and add in more if I see that I need more. That embroidered ribbon there, I'm just going to glue on after I sew the rickrack on. Now I have them all sewn, so I'm going to add my paper clips kind of near the spine of each individual signature. And if you haven't seen any of my other videos on how I sew in, I usually do a pamphlet stitch, which is three holes, or it could be more than three holes, but at least three holes. This one, I'm just doing two holes on each signature, and then I'm putting the needle through. So here I made, I already made a little template for my other books that I made, and I'm punch punching two or four holes in two different lines. And what I did for that was I just cut down a piece of paper that was the size of my spine, and then I measured and divided into four, so there was four holes evenly spaced, and I did that along the top and the bottom, and it looks like my rows are about one inch from the top and the bottom of the spines. So all those were punched. I also punched my holes in each signature, and now I am cutting four pieces of red and white twine, and I usually do three times the size of the height of the signature, so I'm not sure. If these are approximately nine inches long, I would think. And then I'm using a large, like, embroidery needle for this. And, this, and when you have the cotton twine like this, it does take a little while to get it through. All right, I got it through there off camera. <laughs> so now I just went through the middle and then back in through the other end of the hole there. And I'm just going to do a double knot, make sure it's tight, and do a double knot there. And then I also like to make a bow. All right, guys, so I got all of my little signatures sewn in. I think it turned out really cute. I will go in later and do the decorating, like what I did in here, and fill it in with everything. But I wanted to show you or explain how I did the cover. So at the Dollar Tree, you can buy a pack of four of these little chalkboard clips. And so I took my heat gun and heated this up and used some pliers and took the clip off. So um, I'll do that off camera here. But I took... I'll just show you and do it right now. I have a chalk mark, or it's not a chalk marker, it's just a paint marker, just a craft smart one. That way it stays permanent on here. And I'm just gonna write ABC here. At the top. And 
And then I have this Apple Punch. It's an old Marvi Yukaida. I've had it since I started scrapbooking, or back when I started scrapbooking. And then I have some of my paper here. This was a scrapbook collect, a school scrapbook collection. So I just took, cut out one of the little apples, and I'm going to glue that on just with some tacky glue. a little bit it will dry clear but I'm just kind of wipe that off there there we go and then I'm gonna go take off this and then the last thing I'll do is glue the crayon and the crayon is a crayon button that I picked up at Hobby Lobby it's actually just crayons. I put in some other school buttons that I had in my stash, but I just kind of combined them all in here. So I'm going to put a blue one on if I can get it out here. These have a little hole on the back that you have to cut off with some pliers and then kind of sand it down a little bit. and. I just used tacky glue on this. You can also use E6000, but tacky glue worked pretty good. I mean, it's not going to come off there. So I'll be right back and we'll have this taken off. All right, I got it all taken care of here. I'm just going to put, I'm going to leave a little bit off that corner since it's going to kind of go at an angle and just put a good amount of glue here just like that and then the last thing is my crayon button There we go. All right. So hopefully this gives you some inspiration. You really can make a junk journal out of a lot of different things. The next, I really want to make ones out of like the Kool-Aid packets. I've seen Paper Pippi on Instagram make those too. There's just like endless things you can do that would be really super cute because you could do like a color, different color themes with your junk journal supplies doing the Kool-Aid packet little covers. You can also use like um, paper like patterns for sewing. Those make really cute ones. I've done those before too. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this. I thought this was a perfect time to make these little crayon boxes since it is coming up to back to school time. So if you're interested in these, there are four available. As I said, one of this first one that I made here does not have the stitching on the front, but the other ones do. And they're all a little bit different, but have a lot of the same items in them. They have different vintage book pages in them, but all but a lot of the same scrapbook papers and you know, like the book the grid paper and the composition of a paper and stuff like that. So yeah, if you want to check them out. There is a link down below for my Etsy shop. Go ahead and head over there. And if not, hopefully you just got some inspiration from this and learned how to make a cute little journal. So give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave me a comment and subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. Oh, just a little plug here. I did make a little golden book junk journal here. Here's a sneak peek. We like kindergarten, and I'm going to have a little flip through video coming up soon for that. So be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you'll know when 
I post that and it goes up in my Etsy shop as well. So follow me over on Instagram because I'll be doing little posts over there as well. So this is Kim with Creative Crafticality. Bye. God bless.